Hey guys, welcome to The Secret History Living Inside Your Aquarium. I'm Alexander Williamson and I will be guiding you through this little chart. So, uh, first of all I wanted to say that this chart has come from Petro, uh, a source that I've tracked down somewhat, uh, breeder, distributor, and uh, hobbyist. So there have been a lot of charts floating around out there. I had another chart that wasn't quite as clear the direction in which uh, we have selectively bred shrimp. And this is stemming everything from, you know, blue velvet shrimp, sakura, uh, yellow sakura shrimp, green jade shrimp, blue really, black rose, carbon, bloody marys, chocolate, um, shoko, uh, orange, red really, painted fire, bloody mary, you name it. So all those neocaridina shrimp that you, uh, know and love are in this chart and the chart has been changing so I posted a video a few months back and that chart was a little bit confusing in that it had arrows kind of coming and going and kind of maybes and ifs this one is laid out a little more clear there's still a bit of uh, I guess questionable uh, lineage going on but geneticists and hobbyists are trying to figure out what's, what exactly is what. Because this uh, selective breeding process is actually relatively new in the cherry uh, shrimp or neocaridina shrimp uh, project, so to speak, as humans have undertaken. So throughout the history of this, we only have a short time since the mid-90s that people were uh, intensively selectively breeding these for the hobby. So... In the wild, you have basically uh, Palmata and Davidi that have come to be part of what we usually see in pet stores and online in forums and things as Neocaridina shrimp. Now, cherry shrimp were the first to hit the market, later followed by really shrimp and uh, blue shrimp. And so this chart kind of um, shows that transition, but there are several wild types so there's the rusty red wild type, then there's the wild shoko, uh, which is like a darker coloration uh, type, and then there's also a, a lighter orange, um, like uh, yellowish wild uh, type that you find in the wild. And then there are also the palmata variations, which give you all your pearls, blue pearls, white pearls, um, and then there are also hybrids of those mixed in with any given uh, uh, other Davidi um, selection of shrimp. So let me go through this a little bit. In 1997, uh, in Taiwan, uh, breeders were starting to play with this line here. They got shrimp down into Sakura Red as hobbyists, uh, 1999 was the first time that really uh, all of Asia, Japan, started really getting serious about breeding these. Before, people had uh, Neocaridina shrimp basically in their aquariums and things as a uh, filter cleaner shrimp kind of thing. Uh, and kind of the naturalist look inside of nature style uh, tanks. But they weren't bred for the bright colors uh, intentionally anyhow, although many hobbyists did see that uh, you could select for certain traits like stripes or solid patches or clear patches. And from there, it really exploded. And because they reproduce so quickly, um, you know, they can get pregnant every 30 to 45 days in theory. And even though that's not generally how it, it works for each female, but... And then they can have, you know, anywhere from 15 to 30 babies um, easily. And then those grow up within a, maybe three months there at reproduction age. So in a given year, you can, one hobbyist, if they have enough tanks, can actually get pretty far in this, as shown by how far the variants have come in the last, since, well, since last 20 years really is what we're talking about. 1998 being even earlier. So um, the, they hit the scene in 2002, November. Uh, they were brought into the country. And from there, 2003, uh, red cherry shrimp uh, were available. They weren't really graded in a, a coherent system until a little later on. 
but now we have all these other variants. So let's go through some of these variants. If you're just getting into shrimp, this chart should help you. If you're a hardcore breeder, you may have information that I do not have. Um, and keep in mind that a lot of people sourced their shrimp and they may have a Bloody Mary that's a low caliber, assuming it's a red, and then it throws a chocolate, which throws a blue two generations later and then reverts back to a chocolate looking one. And so while you're seeing these arrows pointing in one direction, they also work the other way. So anywhere down this line, it can revert back to these wild source types. And they're not different species, but they're different phenotypes. Pheno meaning how it looks on the outside and genotype being what it's made of genetically in its DNA. And those two things can uh, differ pretty wildly. You can have a red shrimp that is from this lineage, or you can have a red shrimp that is from this one. Um, so the information is a little confusing because some people may have thought that they had, um, you know, cherry shrimp, and it turns out that they had Bloody Marys, and then they're using that information to say that they b bred blue velvets or something along those lines. So, and as you can see here, they all have the same genetics it, as a species, this part of the chart, these are separate slightly from a common ancestor, but there's a path here to blue velvet, which kind of is blue dream or blue velvet, depending on who you ask, kind of the pinnacle of the blue series. Um, Topaz also being another name. And also, some people argue that there are blue pearls crossed with blue dreams, which make a blue topaz. Um, I don't know the truth on that, and I haven't gotten it sorted out. But hopefully genetics will get this sorted out soon. And let's talk about it from this big old mess that I've just said is impossible to sort out for sure, and talk about what we do know. So, this chart here... Start with the wilds that are rusty, selectively breed them redder and redder until you see that their legs are growing actual red on them, and then their shells or their exoskeletons are becoming uh, less and less see-through, so they're becoming opaque as we say, and at a certain point, painted red, fire red, you've got this bright, bright red, uh, but a deep red, and you can't even see through to see a saddle or eggs being carried. And that's kind of the highest grade. Within that, it splits off into two more based on uh, body style and a few other details that we won't go into here. Um, with um, A's and S's being uh, grade systems within the pinnacles of each of these shrimp you see on the list. So, um, basically... We do know that the wild cherry shrimp, or the wild Neocaridina davidi that we have turned into cherry shrimp, it get, got redder and redder, and at any point in time here, it's also thrown red really shrimp. And that is a shrimp with the clear spot, since normally they have little stripes of clear, uh, they threw these, and so that was another early shrimp that came out onto the scene, and people selectively bred for more and more of that clear spot, less and less of red, until it was divided into two. So from there, that clear spot began to show signs of blue. As that red gets deeper, the pigment actually has blue in it too to make the red uh, appear as more of a royal red or a, or a blood red. It has a little bit of blue mixed in with the color in the pigmentation. So from there, people got rid of the red and created blue jellies. Now, some people will argue that blue jellies also have a lineage in Palmata. I don't know the answer to that, but I do know that this path is one that is possible. And so from the painted fire reds, we also have... Um, such dark reds that they start to look black, but that occurs more in my experience with the uh, blue shrimp. So when you have a blue dream shrimp uh, or a blue diamond, they're coming from a brown chocolate shrimp, and some people will say the shoko or wild shoko is chocolate shrimp, but they're they're selectively bred so that they're either a dark brown, bronze, or um, a dark dark chocolate color or light chocolate color. And then from there you go down and they start showing blue. 
And then they start showing uh, more and more blue as the red is weeded out from back here wild type wise. And as they're selectively bred, you end up down here with blue velvet on the far end and blue dream being uh, the apex of this lineage strip here. And you lose the yellow and you gain the red uh, from the or gain the blue from the brown coloration that is in their uh, pigmentation. From there, at any point really, this char chart is a bit deceiving. You can also get really shrimp splitting off. So the reallys can happen anywhere, and it, and a lot of times they look weakly colored. Like the pigment on the other ends of the shrimp will be weakly colored, but you'll get that center strip with either clear as a carbon really is or as uh, blue, as the blue carbon reallys are. And I think I love both of those, but they're a bit interchangeable. And oftentimes your blue shrimp, if they're not a super pure line, can throw kind of odd really combinations or Riley combinations from them. Now let's talk quickly about the difference between a painted fire, which is a dark royal red, and Bloody Mary, which actually has some flesh underneath the exoskeleton that's red, and just a deeper, um, more of a lobster, like a cooked lobster red or something, that, not that bright cooked, but the, the dark red uh, that you can see in some lobsters. Uh, in the wild, lobsters also happen to throw blue, as do crayfish, and that's because to get that deep brown, uh, it needs color combinations under its skin of yellow, green, blue, and red. And so that blue is kind of a variant similar to almost albinoism, uh, a little different than that, but similar if you want to play along. So Bloody Marys are basically the brown type that once in a while uh, will throw the chocolates that have more of a red tint, which is kind of close to the wild of these, but with less translucent spots. And then from there, you got a striped wild shrimp, and that turned into what we know as the Bloody Mary. Now, people have crossed Bloody Marys and painted fires and muddled that all up, and that's why it gets tricky, because when you see a lineage that ends here, essentially, this is the apex of the coloration being... Uh, all the other colors removed, you don't have the blue in there underneath the red necessarily, it's just red, um, you end up with a lot more of a intense color. And so when you cross that back with something that could have blue somewhere in the line, um, because this is not always a progression. So I've been asked several times, you know, well, if it works this way, how come my blue really had a, you know, Sakura red style shrimp baby. Well, those genes are hidden in, in their in their history, in their bodies. And so um, it can revert anywhere along the scale. Although most likely when you cross uh, color types that have been kind of purified into uh, colors that we recognize, such as yellow, green, red, or blue, black, uh, or um, white snowball or white pearl too, um, then you end up getting a wild type. And that I think that's just almost like the genes express themselves in a way that um, it reverts back to what's easiest when it can't figure out what's, not that it is a thinking system of genes, but when there's not a uh, completely clear dominance, uh, the genes revert. So from those cherry shrimp, also you get a lighter color shrimp uh, that turned into orange Rillies or Rileys, just like the red. So you get an orange and red from that rusty color. That clear spot then turns blue on this side, whereas it turns more yellow on this side and starts to throw more of like a greenish yellow um, or a golden color. And I can actually show you that at the very end of the video here, which we're getting to. Um, but I just wanted to explain how this kind of works. And then he, from here, Orange throw green, which is unexpected, right? You wouldn't think that necessarily, but orange shrimp can throw green, and they can also revert back to cherry uh, or wild rusty color or wild yellow color. So it's kind of an interesting little tidbit that they can do that. Uh, Sakura yellow being the most intense yellow of these, and kind of where that line ends, uh, there's also stripes down the back and things like that, other variations that people have 
uh, added to the line, but that's the end of the line, essentially. And then from here, you could also throw, you can skip this step around, and you can actually get from here to the green or green jade. And green are very notorious for throwing brown or yellow or, you know, they're not the most stable line. Um, now people are starting to get green jades that are more and more stable. But it doesn't work like mixing paints. You can't just mix uh, red and yellow and get orange. You know, that's clearly not how this works. Um, down here, uh, the darkest shrimp, uh, it's assumed. I've also seen that there are wild shrimp that are dark enough uh, that they were just selectively bred straight away instead of chocolates into the black rose style shrimp. But under this chart, they're coming from either Painted Fire or Blue Dream. And then they are essentially uh, one of several variants. You get either the clear or the blue in the center, just as you see here um, with that progression of the blue jellies. Now, blue jellies often look like weak uh, blue dreams or blue velvets, which throw off color blue as well. But I just wanted to kind of show you the breakdown of how it goes and just know that if you put a bunch of shrimp in a tank together that are a different neocaridina colors they will not mix the way you think uh logically as the the rest of the world works in as far as color theory goes so now let's take you real quick over to the actual shrimp pardon the shaky camera maybe we'll we'll, we'll cover it so that y'all don't have to get dizzy but um so down here we have some shrimp and I've set aside a couple for you guys to look at. And so essentially these are wild types in here. Uh, you can see here that this one could be considered part shoko with that chocolate color. Um, and then in here we have uh, red reallys also of a low, lower grade. But you can see that blue being thrown and these all came from these red cherry shrimp the, this this brood here happened to be throws from these reds that i've been working with uh for some time now you can see that some of the young ones are going to be once i select them out and grade them uh they're going to be lower grade because they're striped uh but none of these are bloody marys they're just very intensely colored uh painted fire or um, fire shrimp. So up here, let's find some more examples. Here we have a yellow. You can see some of the yellow in their, their guts up in their head, essentially. But you can see the black striping rather than, um, rather than the brown striping. And so that can be selected for over time with more of those so that you're getting, uh, black and you can make a carbon, uh, shrimp also. So it's a little confusing, obviously. Here you can see one that has kind of a green-brown color, and so that is something along the lines of a native uh, wild shrimp also. Um, you know, from there you can select, and sometimes you'll end up with uh, something back in the cherry realm. Right here's a prime example of the more yellowish shrimp. Even though that's its guts that have color and uh, somewhat of the ovaries of the shrimp, there is an actual golden sheen to that head and stuff when you look at it closely. Uh, back up in here, we've got, let's see if we can see from above a little clearer. You can see that blue really well in this female adult uh, red, really. And whereas some of the young ones that she has birthed, um, and these guys are set aside because they're going to a pet store as low grades, uh, but some of them have very nice clear markings um, in between the red rather than bluish ones, it's like this one here. Uh, selective, you could take two of those and select for less and less uh, color so it's clearer, and uh, so on and so forth. So that's kind of what's going on in this little mini breeder box. Over here we have cherry shrimp that didn't make the cut, so to speak, and are also going to the pet store as just plain old cherry shrimp. This is probably as close, like this one here, as in the wild you would see to a cherry shrimp, which sparks the idea of having cherry shrimp. Um, but 
they can easily be selected if you just take the brightest of them and you can select for these. Now, here's another interesting one, which is it is technically a blue dream from uh, Lucas Brett's line that I acquired. And some of the babies in this brood, they're all from one blue dream female, all the blue babies that are in this tank. And I pull the babies as soon as they start to get about yay big. Um, but they have actually, because of the darker substrate here, they've darkened up. So that is part of their epigenetic code. And that is the part of their genes that get expressed um, that can show later in life. Almost like when you go through puberty, these, uh, these shrimp can change according to their environment um, through different hormone responses. They can lighten up or darken up. And so here you see more of the classic blue, very young. These ones are two weeks old or so. Sorry about the focus. And you have some really good quality blues in here. Um, and then you also have some that are so dark that they're probably black. And then you can see that you've got more of a wild type uh, revert from the red colony that's an older group. So up here, let's take a look real quick and see if we can find any of the adult blues that I keep separate. Um, they tend to hide in the day in this tank, but in any case, I just wanted to try to find you one, and I don't think I, I will be successful at this point in time. So that is the, the essential breakdown of the chart with the information we have today. Um, it is subject to change, and if you know something different about the chart, and you have selectively bred and figured out that something uh, is a re revert of something and then cross back, for instance, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, I keep my adult shrimp in separate tanks by color, and then I let the females hatch in this tank, which has no fish, it's just shrimp and snails. And then in this tank, uh, once they're about half inch or maybe a third of an inch, I'll throw them in this tank. So I hope this helps some of you newer uh, folks understand a little bit the basics of it. I don't want to say that this is gospel because the issue is changing and it was also a very proprietary thing that that the shrimp uh, were bred by different distributors and companies for different traits and so sometimes it was not divulged where they came from and that lineage was protected. So just remember that if you learned something here, if you like this video, um, please give it a thumbs up. Think about subscribing or maybe just checking out some of my older videos and uh, have a great day. Take care of your critters. Uh, feel free to message me with any questions, comments, or uh, changes to this. I'll probably be coming out with another video as uh, currently genetic testing is underway to figure out what's what about this. Um, snails are great in your shrimp tank, by the way. They eat the extra food that the shrimp don't get to. This one would be a grade below a painted fire. She's got all red, but you can still see through her in the light. Um, so I'll be getting rid of these other shrimp today. They're of the size too close to an adult that I don't want them to mix and ruin my line. So this isn't the professional way to do it. You'd want to keep every color and strain separate. But I am not necessarily a professional, obviously, shrimp breeder. I'm a hobbyist, and I like to mix it up a little bit and see what I get. And I don't have a million tanks. I have five tanks to work with, four practically. So I have a blue tank, a red tank, a yellow tank, and uh, a wild-type tank that mixes however random hodgepodge mixes uh, end up. So... Uh, these will not intermix also with Caradina, if everybody's wondering. Um, the Palmata, they can, and there are also some other new, uh, variants of Neo Caradina that people are arguing whether or not they are, uh, actual different species, like the, the rusty red wilds versus the, uh, the darker wilds. Is that a, a whole new species? I don't know. We'll find out sometime. So... I hope you guys have a great day. Take care and keep on swimming. Talk to you next time. Bye.